Earlier this morning, Canon published their annual business outlook. And there's some interesting tidbits in this. Now, one of the things they made mention of is that the camera market is finally bottoming out. So we're looking at around 5 million units of interchange lens cameras being shipped each year. That's considerably down from around 2011 when we were right around 15 to 22 million. So I think, it, no, it was around 22 million, I believe. So the market has really contracted. But what Canon said is they expect to dethrone Sony as the number one in mirrorless cameras. Now, when it comes to mirrorless cameras, remember that Sony is number one. But when it comes to total DSLR and mirrorless cameras, well, Canon is still number one with about 49, 47% market share. But Canon has said that within four years, they plan to dethrone Sony, that they plan to become the number one worldwide producer of mirrorless cameras. So what is Canon going to do to help achieve this? Well, they did start off with the R5 and the R6 a couple of years ago, and those were solid cameras, but there's still an awful lot of holes in Canon's lineup. Now, they did say that they're planning on releasing four new RF lenses each year for a total of four years for a total of 32 lenses. But what did Canon say about the R7, the R1, or any other camera bodies? Nothing. Not a single word. We are supposed to be getting the R7 announced this month. That is according to Canon Rumors. But as Canon Rumors said in their previous post, it really depends on, well, supply chain, logistics, all these issues that we're having in the world that started right around early, I guess, March of or February of 2020 and haven't gotten better. They got worse in 2021 and they're still getting worse in 2022. And now we have further material shortages from other base metals and precious metals coming out of Russia. It looks like 2022 isn't going to be much better. So are we still supposed to be getting an announcement of the R7 in March? Nothing has changed. I haven't seen anything else on the net, anything that is remotely reliable and trustworthy that says anything to the opposite. I've also seen nothing that further validates what Canon Rumors had said. If we don't get an announcement in March, then it could be April. But there are an awful lot of holes in Canon's lineup. And if we look at previous rumors by Canon Rumors, where they're rated as at least a CR2, we have an awful lot of holes that need to be filled. The RP, the EOS R, are very old cameras. When it comes to full frame, while the EOS RP is a great buy at $899 and $999, it's really looking a little bit old in the tooth, as is the EOS R. And then your next Canon mirrorless camera full frame is the R6 at around $2495, $2499, right around there. And, well, that's a tall order for many people. So there's a huge, a huge hole there. We're expecting a refresh of the RP. We're expecting another camera between the RP and the R6. We're expecting a 90D successor in the APS-C on the RF mount, and that's kind of a big deal, but we're also, we're also expecting that this R7 is going to be an APS-C RF mount camera, and that's kind of a big deal. Craig at Canon Rumors has come out and said to me, yeah, I can't see Canon not making this an APS-C camera. It's not gonna be a full frame. So the first APS-C camera for the RF mount could very well be the successor, the much anticipated, the long awaited 7D Mark III. It's been so long for that camera, it's not going to be called the 7D Mark III, obviously, but it's going to be called the R7. And the 7D Mark II hasn't even been available for sale for quite some time. So, really, really big deal. Uh, looking at some of the notes, making sure I haven't left anything out. Oh, yes, one thing Canon did say in their annual business outlook is. They're looking for more efficiencies. And one of the things they said is they want to increase profits by squeezing production and design efficiencies. And as I'm sure you probably already noticed with the increase in price of the EF 100 millimeter and some other lenses like the 800 millimeter that I have here, Canon has also been increasing prices. Yay. Gah. <laughs> we live in a very interesting world. I'm not going to get into politics or anything like that because that's not what this channel is about. But Wow, uh, 2022 is definitely off to an interesting start, but sticking to cameras, we are expecting an awful lot of very interesting announcements. The R7, I think, was probably going to be the next announcement we get from Canon. As far as other APS-C cameras, there's certainly three possible cameras we can get. Again, the 7D successor, the 90D successor, although it's only been about two years for that camera body, and of course, a really entry level like an SL2 or SL3 successor. Full frame, EOS RP, the EOS R replacement. We're looking at the R1. We're starting to get some trickles and leaks on this camera, but I don't expect the leak machine to really start turning on for a couple of more months. 
Very interesting. But now let's take a turn behind the scenes, and I'm going to keep this rather simple. I'm not going to do multiple takes. In fact, I've done this whole video right from the beginning without doing any multiple takes. And the first part of doing any video for me is trying to get that first 15 to 30 seconds perfect without a pause, without a, a, a pause or any other interruption, because you can easily lose 30% of your audience when the first 15 to 30 seconds easily, and sometimes as much as 60 or 70%. So I will often redo that take multiple times, but usually the rest of the video, like this one here, I speak continuously. Now, sometimes if there's an extra pause or if I put in B-roll, I will cut and trim out some of the empty spaces, but essentially this is a full cut. It's been a very, very busy January and February, and I came to the end of February thinking, okay, I'm quitting the channel. I'm done. That's it. Not really. I mean, I do this every now and then. I say to myself, okay, you know what? Walk away. Take a few days off. Take a week off. Whatever you feel like, and just completely walk away from the channel. In fact, what I usually do is I detach the R5. I detach the Ninja 5. I put in a battery. I take it upstairs. I put the strap back on it, and I leave it upstairs, and it the first thing I think over that camera is if I'm doing something, if the weather changes, if there's an opportunity to go out for a walk, I grab the camera, take it with me, then I put on the lens to get the job done. And if I'm going to be out like I was on Saturday, I put the 24 to 105 on. If I'm going to be in what I consider to be a relatively low light situation, it's going to be the RF 50 millimeter f1.2. And if I'm stargazing or wildlife, it's the 800 millimeter. And of course, in the summer, I'll usually put on the 100 millimeter macro. And have a bit of fun. But I promised my son this weekend that if he was behaving, we'd go out on the ice. You see, March is the safest and yet the most dangerous time to go on the ice. And let me explain, if you're not from a cold climate, March is when weather patterns really shift. And this is when we can start to see really, really cold temperatures like minus 20 or even minus 30. And then within a day, they can go all the way up to now I'm going to stay in Celsius. I'm talking Celsius. So all the way up to about 20 degrees. And this weekend it went up to 20 degrees or about 60 degrees Fahrenheit. And so I, so what's important here, because I'm trying to remember my story and also explain to you why the significance of March is. We've had minimum of four really, really cold months. And this winter it got really, really cold. So there's about two to three feet of ice on the lake. So the beginning of March, you've got the most amount of ice, the thickest amount of ice, and in the Bay Area, it freezes all the way across. It's very, very solid, very few pressure ridges. So if you're driving or doing whatever you are on the ice, you're not going to have to worry about going in the drink. Because even when the ice is really thick, the ice will expand and contract, and it can open up and leave patches of water, or it can create fault lines, like you would see with the San Andreas Fault, where you see the, the land heaving up, same sort of thing on the ice. Then, once you start to get the thaw, like we did yesterday, it all starts to go crazy. The ice will expand dramatically. You'll start to get pressure ridges. You'll get icy areas with water. Um, like, you'll have a huge sort of pond on the ice. And so it can get very, very dangerous very quickly. So I promised my son if he was good, I'd take him up to the ice. And so I did. First thing, I found a place to go on the ice that was safe. I further validated that the ice was safe. I checked it. I, we did some walking on the ice up to where I could see where the ice was, how thick it was. And you can tell by pressure cracks and other things, or even ice bore holes, you can tell whether the ice is thick enough. You can also tell by the color of the ice in cases where you can actually see straight through. Now, usually this time of year, the ice has been thawing and freezing on the surface for some time, which kind of makes it a little bit more opaque, so it's hard to tell. But it was thick enough that we got in the car and we drove out to one of the communities. One of the communities on the ice where they have these little fish huts and villages, and they're actually really solidly built. And so we drove out there, we parked off on the main highway, and we went to visit one of the fishermen. And my son got to do some ice fishing. He really enjoyed that. He had a lot of fun, um, you know, sliding around on the ice, playing with the ice, playing with the snow, doing some ice fishing, and getting to act like he was in a four-wheeler. He really did have an awful lot of fun this weekend. And then, of course, we went out for a bite to eat. But for me, this was a really relaxing weekend because I really didn't check the news sites at all. I wasn't expecting much. Sure, around 5 o'clock in the evening, I would tune in and check. But for most of the weekend, I was done. I was on vacation. I was relaxing. And it was an awful lot of fun. And even this video here, the topic of this video, which is Canon's 
annual business outlook, I had seen this information earlier in the day and I just thought, you know what? No, I'm not doing it. I'm not touching it. It's not a big news story. Uh, lunchtime came, break came. I said, no, I'm not doing it. And then when I picked my son up from school and work ended, I thought, hmm, well, let's have a little bit of fun with it. Let's get out there. Let's do something. Um, because there are some interesting stories in the news that I reported earlier today, which are earlier in the video. So very, very interesting stuff. But, you know, doing a channel like this is a part-time job for me. I have a full-time job and I have a family. And sometimes I just, I say, that's it. And when you're doing stuff like January and February, we got the OM1 coming out. You got the Panasonic GH6 coming out. You got talk about the Canon R7. I can't just say no. I can't just walk away because that's kind of what I do. That's my bread and butter and that's what I have to focus on. But when that kind of dies away and things open up a little bit, like the eye of a hurricane, I kind of sit back and say, you know what? I'm done. I'm quitting. I'm taking a break. And last year, that break sometimes lasted almost a month because, well, there was no news coming out. None whatsoever. And this time around, well, I expect I'll get a week or two of a break. So if you don't get any news for a while and you wonder if I've stopped, no, that's not the case. Because if I do actually really do quit this channel, I'll put out a video, I'll put out a video saying, I'm done. I quit. That's it. No more. It'll be rather succinct to the point. So when you click on the video, it's not going to be one of those. Yeah, I decided to quit and I decided not to. I really hate it when people do that. You know, don't, don't do that. You're playing with people's hearts and minds. So, here we are. And I, I don't even know how long have I been rambling for. I'm going to bring up my task cam here. Let's take a look. That's only around 13 minutes. But that translates to quite a bit of editing time. So, 13 minutes, 19 seconds, I've uh, been on the recorder. I haven't been doing an awful lot of behind the scenes lately because, well, you know, I decided to kind of cut that so I can focus on just getting the content out and making the videos a little bit shorter. Because... The more time I spend editing, especially on a computer like this, which is the MacBook Air, this is a seven core unit, seven core GPU. It's got eight gigs of RAM. And this is what I do all the editing for this channel on. And yes, they are all 8K out of the Canon R5, all I, 470 megabits per second. And yet all my videos are done on this and it can handle it. It can handle it rather well. But hopefully, and this is a little bit more behind the scenes, tomorrow when Apple does their announcement, they're going to offer something that is going to give me what I'm looking for. I was actually looking at getting the 27-inch iMac refresh last year, but then Apple didn't release it. They gave us a 24-inch, and I like that bigger screen. I'm often working with 4K and even 8K video, and having that larger, high-resolution screen really, really matters. And having it all in one, it's really simple. Everything is tuned, set up properly. I don't have to futz around with anything. So I'm really hoping they come out with something like that tomorrow with plenty of ports, both USB-A and USB-C. I really hope so. I really do. Because um, while this is more than capable, I find that it just doesn't... A 13-inch screen when you're editing 4K video isn't enough. And somebody like myself that always needs glasses, this is not good enough for me. If, though, you're an ordinary filmmaker and this is kind of something you do for fun, you might shoot a video a month or a couple in a year. You know what? This is really all you need. You don't need something super expensive, not with Canon's new architecture, this ARM architecture. You don't need one of those MacBook Pros with an M1 Max. It's really overrated. But for me, where when things are going at their peak, I'm doing anywhere from two to four videos a given day and a live stream, this... It's, it's not enough for me in terms of the screen. I need a bigger screen because I miss things. I don't see mistakes. I don't even see if the focus has pulled or made a mistake because the screen is so small. But for the ordinary person, this is terrific. Now, as far as performance goes, yes, it works, and I could use an external monitor, but then i got to go out and buy a decent-priced external monitor. And I've already got extras in the house. They're older. I just got more junk in the house. And I want to keep things simple. And the nice thing about those Apple all-in-ones, when I do go to sell them, I can flip them out really quickly and I don't have to, oh, well, what do I do with the monitor? Because nobody ever wants the monitor. But with an all-in-one, it's a different story. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget, I do have an announcement. I am announcing at the end of this month, I'm giving away another um, AV Pro CF Express card. Uh, the details are in the description down below and I put out a video on that. So in all the videos for the rest of the months, the rest of this month, I'm not going to go into detail talking about the giveaways. I'm just going to put this little thing up at the bottom of the screen. So if you're interested, yeah, you can go ahead and go into the description, click on that video link, 
and then you can find out more, but it's very simple to have a chance to win, to enter the draw. There's absolutely nobody, nobody on the planet that can't, well, participate, unless, of course, you're prohibited by your region, and, of course, you're under the age of 18. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.